Thank you, Yuri, for the introduction. Uh, I'm sorry I cannot continue in Russian, but I'll, I'll try to speak uh, in English very clearly and very slowly. And hopefully, uh, despite the distance, you'll be able to, to uh, hear me well. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm Jordi Alastre, so I'm, I'm a lecturer in uh, the Department of Biomedical Engineering at King's College in London. And I'm also a visiting researcher in uh, the Institute of Personalized Medicine uh, here at uh, Sechenov University. And today I'm going to talk about how biomedical engineering uh, can uh, help engineer better health, better health. So let's see if I can go to the next slide. Yeah, here we are. Sorry. Here we are. So, yeah, so I am based in uh, St. Thomas's Hospital, which is this building here, you can see in this picture, which is really in the heart of, of London. This is a research hospital. It's a big uh, hospital. And here you can see the Big Ben. Uh, here you can see the River Thames. So we are really in the, in the center of London. And in the, in the hospital, I carry out research in uh, basically focus on modeling blood flow in the cardiovascular system in collaboration with medical doctors. So today uh, I have this outline uh, for my presentation. So first uh, I'm going to start by uh, uh, answering this question. So what's biomedical engineering? Uh, why is it important? Uh, and then I'm going to focus on the core biomedical engineering competencies or skills that are uh, necessary uh, to to be able to become a biomedical engineer. And then I'll conclude with a couple of examples that illustrate how biomedical engineering can provide uh, a better uh, healthcare uh, in our society. So let's start with biomedical engineering. So what's biomedical engineering? So biomedical engineering is basically the application of classical engineering uh, to the complex problems in biology and medicine. And the aim here is to provide effective solutions for healthcare. So basically we are using concepts from classical engineering to understand how the human body works. And by doing that, we aim at really improving uh, the way that uh, healthcare can be carried out. And biomedical engineers design products and procedures that uh, really solve uh, medical challenges that are really uh, very important in today's society. Here you have in this slide a collection of such um, products and, and procedures. So for example, we have lots of uh, processes, um, we have uh, artificial organs, uh, we have uh, medical devices like the one you can see here, which is um, a CT scanner to see inside the body. So it allows um, doctors to see inside uh, the body and really to get very clear images of the body. But also we can even have like very simple devices as a syringe, as you can see here and which was also it has been designed um, by applying uh, engineering principles so why is biomedical engineering important so the provision of effective and efficient healthcare is really a priority anywhere in the world yeah we all want to to uh, live in a society really that um, where um, there is an efficient uh, uh, healthcare system. But the problem is that the population uh, worldwide is aging in many societies in the world. Uh, we are getting older as a society. That's good news because it means that we are living for longer. But that also has an implication in uh, the way that we, we provide efficient healthcare because uh, governments have uh, limit, limited budgets and that requires really to have a, a way to, to go in the direction of improving the, the, the way that we deliver uh, these healthcare solutions in a more efficient way, right? So here we have really an engineering problem, right? Because in engineering, 
we really like to focus on finding uh, efficient solutions. And that's why it's so important to apply engineering tools to uh, medicine, biology. And, and that's because really there is a strong need uh, for bet better medical devices and equipment. Um. Hello? So, I think some Jordi. Yeah, here I am. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yes, okay. I think there was a problem. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Continue. Yeah, can I continue? Yes. So one one thing that um, I didn't say at the beginning, I should have said that. If anyone has any questions, please really interrupt me, and yeah, I'm I'm really happy to answer any questions as I go on. Uh, there might be some time at the end for questions, but you can also interrupt me at any point. So yeah, what what is biomedical? Uh, so why is biomedical engineering important? So biomedical engineering plays a, an important role in in uh, delivering a better treatment and to achieve better treatment that means that we need to be able to prevent um, disease uh, and that also implies earlier detection of disease and we aim at uh, achieving better outcomes for patients and remember that before i said that we need to be efficient also from an economical point of view uh, so it's it's very important to have uh, to aim at having lower cost uh, per treatment as much as possible, and the the aim is always to improve uh, treatment and improve uh, well being of people. So biomedical engineering has an important, uh, very significant socioeconomic impact. Uh, it it plays really a big role in improving a society. So now that I've introduced what biomedical engineering is and why it is important, I'm going to focus on the core biomedical engineering skills. So what, what are the skills that are required to uh, be able to become a biomedical engineer? So here, the, the key idea is that biomedical engineering uh, takes uh, skills from classical engineering uh, and puts them into a biomedic into a biomedical or biological and medical context. So, for example, uh, well, mathematics is really at the core of any engineering degree or discipline, and it's also uh, uh, very important for biomedical engineering. But then, biomedical engineering also takes um, skills and concepts from mechanical engineering. Right, so here we have robots, and robots are also very important in biomedical engineering. Later on, I'm going to give you some examples. Uh, then also chemical engineering is a, another important engineering discipline that really helps a lot in biomedical engineering. And even aeronautical engineering and computational fluid dynamics is very important really in in, uh, bio, in solving biomedical engineering problems. So the idea is that we take these classical engineering skills uh, and, and, and concepts and put them in a biomedical context. And uh, now I'm going to give you a few examples going uh, through different classical engineering disciplines and see how uh, they can contribute to uh, biomedical engineering. Uh, so uh, before we had robots, big robots in a, in a manufacturing line. And here we have uh, surgeons that are operating using uh, robots as well. Uh, before we had um, an example of chemical engineering. Uh, and here is a biomedical engineering example of using uh, concepts from chemical engineering to design tissues, to, to engineer tissues in the body. And before we had a plane or a jet and uh, the simulation of the interaction of the jet flying in air and how it interacts with, with air. 
and here we have a simulation of blood uh, flowing inside the aorta, which is, is the largest artery in the human body. And actually the key here is that to simulate, to, to do these simulations, we really need to use numerical schemes, numerical techniques that were developed in aeronautical engineering. Right, so that's the key. So it's, uh, biomedical engineering is another engineering discipline. It's, uh, it's newer than the classical engineering disciplines, but nevertheless, it uses really uh, concepts and, and tools that were designed in, in other uh, engineering disciplines. Mathematics and physics are all, always very important in an engineering degree, and that's the same also for biomedical engineering. And now I'm gonna go uh, like giving you through different examples of how uh, classical engineering degrees or, or disciplines can uh, help uh, with biomedical engineering. So first one is mechanical engineering. And here uh, the key is that um, we, we saw before that mechanical engineering really is very, is a, an engineering dis discipline that allows us to design robots. And robots are very important in, in biomedical engineering. Here you have an example. So this is called the, the Da Vinci uh, Surgical System. And you can see it in here, a machine that really facilitates complex surgery using minimally invasive approach. So here you have a collection of robots that are being operated by a surgeon uh, through, through this console that you can see in here. So it's, it's minimally invasive because the, it allows for surgery that it doesn't require really a big, um, um, big uh, holes in the body. And why is it called Da Vinci? It's called Da Vinci after Leonardo Da Vinci. And according to the, the manufacturer of this machine, they decided to call it Da Vinci because uh, Leonardo Da Vinci uh, was wa one of the first people that thanks to his ideas and research uh, was um, or initiated the, the uh, production and the design of robots. So this is a very complex robot, but Leonardo da Vinci was already um, making robots. And, and that's the link between the, um, uh, Vitruvian, the, the Vitruvian man that uh, you saw at the beginning of the, of the presentation and biomedical engineering. So Electrical engineering is another important discipline in classical engineering. And electrical engineering allows the design of big machines uh, that are used in biomedical engineering. So here you have an example. So this is a magnetic resonance imaging uh, device uh, that allows um, doctors to see inside the body, uh, to take pictures of the anatomy of the body, but also uh, also uh, understand a bit better physiology, as I'm, I'm gonna give you some examples in a few uh, minutes. And this, this device uses um, concepts that, uh, or tools that were uh, designed by electrical engineers. It, it uses magnetic fields and also radio frequency um, signals to produce these sort of images. And not only images, but also movies, as you can see in here. So this is a, a movie of the aorta. So here you can see the aorta. This is the heart. And you can see that when the heart pumps is injecting blood inside the aorta. Yeah, and, and that's something that you can see because there is an increase in the brightness of the, of the pixels. And yeah, and you can see other features in, of, the, of the body. This is the chest, uh, the spine, the, the lung cavity in here. 
and you can take these images uh, through any plane. So this is this one here is through a transverse plane view. So it's a, a plane that cuts through this line. And now uh, the the aorta is in here and in here. Yeah, because we are cutting through here and through here. So really, this is very useful for medical doctors to see inside the body to to see the anatomy of the patient and also the, the physiology of the patient. Electronic engineering is another, another uh, classic engineering discipline that helps a lot in biomedical engineering. So nowadays, smart wearables are uh, very, becoming very fashionable. You might have one of these devices that I'm showing here. These are devices that we can really wear in our, like, for example, on our wrist, in the body, uh, any place in the body. So we can wear them as if they were clothes and they can sense uh, the, the, the person wearing them. So they, they really can acquire signals from the human body. And the devices are full of uh, electronic components. So components that were designed uh, using electronic engineering. And here you have a few examples of them. So we have a pulse oximeter that you might have seen those in, in hospitals. They measure oxygen saturation in blood, but also they can also measure signals that are related to the um, signal produced uh, by the, the contraction of the heart and the propagation of the pulse wave. So the pulse that you can feel on your wrist uh, can be measured by this uh, device in the finger as well. There are also devices to measure blood pressure, uh, also to measure the electrocardiogram signal yeah, that is produced by the heart. It's an electric signal produced by the heart. Uh, also sensors to, to be able to assess uh, the the uh, breathe, breathing or respiration of the subject. So we have these respiratory sensors, uh, also smart watches that are very popular for people that like uh, running marathons. So they display um, the heart rate, for example, and also uh, pedometers that are able to, to count uh, how many kilometers we walk in a, in a day. Chemical engineering, so um, another uh, important engineering discipline, and it's, it, has been, it has been very important in biomedical engineering. Here you have an example. So these images, all these images were obtained by uh, using computed tomography. So this, this is another imaging technique. So before I show you magnetic resonance imaging, so now this is a different imaging technique it it works following the, uh, different physical principles and here the physical principle is x-rays so this is a technique that uh, uses x-rays to image the body and the key here is that it often requires radio contrast agents to really highlight the the structures that we can see here so to be able to obtain these images that are so bright, they, it's really required to inject these contrast agents inside the, the patient. And these agents are designed by chemical engineers. Here you have another example of an image that can be obtained uh, using computed tomography combined with these chemical agents contrast agents. So before, I didn't say that, so this is a whole body image and this is a cut through this uh, transverse plane in here. So you can clearly see the cavity in the lungs and other, other uh, anatomical features of, the, of this person. Uh, this is, these are images of the brain and here uh, we have a image uh, that shows that there is a big tumor, unfortunately, for this uh, patient, uh, and also shows important organs, kidneys, liver, uh, there's also the spine in here, 
so they can really be seen with plenty of detail. And here we have the two um, lungs, so the lung cavities and all the blood vessels that are perfusing those lungs. And these are the two pulmonary arteries. We have also the, the aorta in here. And they are also, you can also see a bit the cavities of the heart. And here we have the spine. So fluid engineering is uh, another engineering discipline that also helps a lot uh, with uh, biomedical engineering problems. Uh, here, the idea is that we can use uh, computational models to simulate uh, the interaction uh, between a solid and a fluid. And uh, these examples that you can see here come from uh, engineering in general, so from the design of, of cars, so how they interact, uh, how the, the design of the, of the body of the car uh, interacts with the, the air, so it simulates a, a wind tunnel, uh, and the same for a, for a big uh, lorry and for a plane. And this one, I, I found it, I put it here because it was funny, I think it was... Uh, it it's was, just a meme. <laughs> Yes, it, it was designed, or it, it was uh, produced by um, an Indian uh, company. The uh, cows are very popular in India. Uh, so these are examples of computational fluid dynamics uh, problems. And in, in here, I'm going to show you some examples of similar problems. So problems where we have a fluid and we have a structure, uh, but those are the, the interaction between blood. So blood is the fluid, and this is the left uh, ventricle. So this is the structure, and we can see the complex uh, flow patterns inside uh, this uh, ventricle of the heart. And the numerical te techniques that are used to produce these animations and solve these problems are really very, very similar to the ones I show you, uh, the, the ones for the examples I showed you before. Uh, here we have another example. Uh, so here we have the human femoral artery. So we have the, the femoral artery and, and a, a bifurcation. And we can use uh, fluid engineering or computational fluid dynamics to uh, simulate different physical quantities that are important to understand um, the interaction between blood and the, the arterial wall. And here it's important to realize that uh, unlike in, in um, classical engineering problems involving vehicles uh, or, or airplanes, uh, here we, the, the solid is made up of cells, so it's alive, right? So cells can react to the mechanical stresses produced by blood flowing inside the, this artery. And it's important to be able to calculate the mechanical stresses produced by blood uh, on the, the cells that are uh, lining up the arterial wall. And we can do that using these simulations. And here, this is the, the final example I wanted to show you. So here we have a simulation of uh, so blood pressure, blood velocity, and this is shear stress. So this is a mechanical stress on the wall of these arteries. And we can perform these simulations again using computational fluid dynamics. And it's, these are very colorful simulations, but they really produce lots of important data that cannot be directly measured, but it, it needs to be computed from other data that can be measured. So for example, we can use medical images to be able to get the, the anatomy or the geometry of uh, these arteries, but then we need to solve fluid equations and solid equations, so physical equations, using fluid engineering to 
calculate all these physical quantities that are important uh, for biomedical engineering. Another engineering discipline is software engineering. And here in this, uh, in, in this movie, you can see that it allows soft, software engineering allows us to create software, uh, for example, in this case, to simulate heart surgery. And this is for training purposes so that um, medical doctors or, or also medical students, they can practice and they can learn how to perform these complex uh, interventions uh, and they don't really need to, to use real people to do that, but they can use uh, a software. And this, this um, software can be really very, com very uh, complex actually, and they can, so they can also incorporate the, the joysticks that you saw before, that they can sense uh, the forces. So depending on, on how much uh, we press against uh, a, a, a tissue, right, a simulated tissue, uh, the joystick can, can feel Now uh, I have this third uh, part here, which is conclusions. And I would like to show you. Uh, Jordi, yeah. excuse me, uh, let me to interrupt you for one minute. Yeah. Uh, uh, так, дорогие студенты, сейчас мы делаем перекличку. Пожалуйста, отмечайтесь в чате и обязательно все старосты должны сейчас отметиться и потом прислать в списке. Если староста нет, то должен за него список прислать кто-то его в виде заместителя. Следите сами, студенты, за своей группы, чтобы списки все прислали. Поехали. Да, перерыва не будет. В этой сейчас презентации подряд. Никаких 40 минут. Подряд сколько будет, столько и будет. Жорди разговаривать. Жорди, please, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Yuri. So, as to conclude, I would like to show you two examples that illustrate the importance of biomedical engineering. So the first example, so I'm just trying to remove something from my sc screen. So, okay, here we go. So the first example illustrates this uh, first conclusion that says here that biomedical engineering exploits interdisciplinary expertise to transform the future of healthcare. So here the key is that it's uh, interdisciplinary, um, it requires interdisciplinary expertise. And here, uh, as an example, I'm going to show you a movie in a second that shows a animation on uh, this, uh, how to insert this device that has been designed by biomedical engineers into, into the heart. And what, so this device is a transcatheter aortic valve implantation, or TAVI. And what this device does is to replace the aortic valve by, by a, a um, prosthetic uh, valve that has been designed by biomedical engineers. And obviously to achieve that, so the design of the device and then to be able to in, insert it in, inside the, a, a, a patient and, you know, and, and replace the valve and everything uh, smoothly without any problems, this really requires lots of interdisciplinary expertise. So now I'm going to show you the, the movie. Let's see. So here we are. So the, the device is inserted uh, through the femoral artery and all the way up to the aorta, up to the, to the heart. So the first thing that they do is they, they don't insert the device, but they insert this catheter uh, and then later, so now they are inserting the, the valve. Or first they are actually first they are expanding the 
the aortic valve that is not working well. So this is the one that the patient had. They're, they are expanding the, that valve and now they are gonna insert the, the prosthetic uh, valve, which is folded. So here is where they had to fold the, this valve and then they will have to expand it when it's in position. So they go all the way up to the ascending part of the aorta and now they are placing it in position. And the first thing that they're gonna do is to stop the heart for a few seconds. Here, now, and now they, they um, inflate the, this prosthetic valve and now they'll start removing all the all the catheters and all the wires inserted and that's the end of the of this intervention obviously this movie takes only one minute and a half but in reality this intervention takes a bit longer but here the key is that to design all these uh, devices it really you really require interdisciplinary expertise so that's the first thing that I wanted to say to conclude that it's um, biomedical engineering really requires interdisciplinary expertise. And the um, second take home message is that biomedical engineers design devices and technologies that really save and improve life. And as an example on a device that improve life of patients, is this, this one that you can see here. This is called a cochlear implant and it enables the, so people who are uh, hearing impaired, so they cannot hear, to hear again, or sometimes for the first time. And this device, it's, it's important to realize that it doesn't amplify the, the sound, as many other devices do, but this one really interacts with the 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 nerve uh, in the ear, in the inner inner ear, uh, to to send signals to the brain, and it's very it's very cleverly designed. Jordi, I have a question. Uh, yes. So, is it like the Neuralink uh, system, uh, which has designed Elon Musk, or something similar? The, What's your opinion about this? Yes, yes. So that that's happening and now. It's it's uh, very fast. You know, it's great that they are all these devices that are being de designed, including the one that you mentioned, and it's going in that direction. That uh, they are gonna interact. These devices are really interacting with the nervous system of the of the patient, uh, and and it's and that requires really um, a very good understanding of anatomy and physiology, of human anatomy and physiology, and therefore that's why it's required this interdisciplinary expertise. So now I'm going to show you a, a movie. I don't, can you hear the, the sound as well? So the, this girl it has had had the, this device implanted, just implanted, and now they're going to switch it on. Oh, uh, there is no sound. I can no sound. hear okay. the sound of the moon. So, well, I'll because, try to put... because Zoom just. Is it better? Yeah, much better. There you go, it's creeping. So now technically your device is on. <laughs> can you tell? Wow. So, so it's the first time that this girl can hear something. <laughs> uh, and it's thanks to this device uh, that was designed by biomedical engineers. So yeah, that's the, the end of my, my presentation. So hopefully it was uh, interesting. Uh, you have any questions? Uh, anyone else wants to ask anything? We very happy to answer them. Вопрос, пожалуйста, да.
So I have a question. Um, how do you, uh, the, how, how is it? Um, how uh, difficult is it uh, to design an absolutely new device in this area or uh, in this uh, field of uh, science? So, uh, how long does it take? Yeah, obviously it takes time. Yeah, uh, it takes time and like yeah. months or years or what? <laughs> Right, right. Uh, so yeah, I cannot tell you exactly how long it took the people who designed the, the two devices I've shown you, the, the TAVI device and the cochlear implant, uh, but it, it must take really, really um, at least a year or, or even more. And also you need to understand that uh, mo most of, in most of the cases, these dev devices, they use really uh, concepts uh, that have been Oh, they use research. So they use research that has been carried out at uh, university uh, by researchers in universities. And, and then at some point someone realizes, oh, we can do something with this new technology that has been designed in a lab in a university. And then industry starts interacting with, um, sometimes it happens like that, they interact with university uh, and then they, join forces together and they they design the uh, the device but then once it's it's designed it needs to be tested also so it's a long process right it's now uh, the typical the the most uh, famous example at the moment is the design of a vaccine for covid-19 and you, you can see that it's taking some time uh, despite so many people working on it right so it it takes it really takes I would say at least a year or if not years. Thank you. Other questions? Well, uh, if not, uh, let us thank uh, Jordi for wonderful and very useful lecture and uh, see you later Jordi thank you very much yeah, thank, thank you very much for the presentation thank you goodbye. very much thank you goodbye. everyone thank you goodbye goodbye спасибо до свидания